everything I'm going to show you in this lesson is really stuff that really only the most elite violinists and violists tend to learn after many years. I started when I was five. I learned this from Michael Davis when I was probably 18 years old. And it was the type of change that I had to make that was a huge shift. It's like breaking a lot of habits. It reminds me of Tiger Woods, who took a year off so that he could change his golf swing, even though he was number one in the PGA at the time. But he realized that by changing some habits, he could get more accuracy or more power from his swing. That's what this kind of technique has the power to do for you, if you have the patience to stick with it. And I think you should spend five to 10 minutes a day on it and allow yourself a couple months actually for this to sink in. So I'll get right into teaching you how to do this. The first thing you wanna do is that you just wanna play on an open string. Make sure you're supporting your instrument with, with this arm, with your left arm. And you wanna start at the frog and you wanna just get this pinch sound. I know it's a crazy sound, but you want to get that sound when you start the bow and draw it. Go all the way to the tip. Stop. Then pinch. You're going to pinch right here to get that sound again. And draw the bow again, all the way to the frog. And keep the bow engaged in the string. Try that a few times. I'll show it to you again. So pinching here and drawing. Stop. Leaving, I'm pressing up from here and I'm pressing down from here. But my neck and my shoulders are relaxed. Do that. Now here. Stay engaged. Go as far as you can. Let's go from the tip again. Supporting here from this arm. Then that allows you to put pressure here by pinching with this finger. And stay engaged, go as far as you can. When I say stay engaged, it means the, the, the hair is still pushing as far as you can go. Don't release the pressure, okay? Now you get to hear. That's the first thing I want you to practice. Just practice that a few times. Do it 10 times, okay? You can press pause if you want. Then when you're ready, I'm going to show you the next thing I want you to do. So, um... <clears throat> What, I'll just show you what it's gonna look like. If you watch my hand, when I go to the, to the, um, to the frog from the up bow, this naturally happens. My wrist comes up. You see, it comes up like this. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push with my pinky the bow like this. And at the same time, my wrist is gonna cave in. You can even try to do this. This is going to be a little bit weird at first. But you can think about it two ways. You can think about your wrist coming up and caving in. Wrist comes up, wrist caves in. Or you can think about what's happening at the frog. The frog of the bow moves towards your chin. The frog of the bow moves away from your chin. Those two activities are interlinked. So I don't think it's possible to move the pinky without my <laughs> wrist wanting to come up and vice versa, right? Okay, so you can try that a little bit if you want, but it might be hard, but that's fine. And I'm gonna show you the next step. Start here, do your down bow. Go to the tip. Press in, go all the way to the, to the frog as far as you can and stop. Stop. Now when you get here, your wrist should be up here, probably. What you want to do now is push the, the tip away and let your wrist cave in. And then draw the bow with your crunch sound, right? Go to the tip. Stop. From the tip, crunch and go all the way to the frog. Your wrist should have come up. Now what you're going to do is with your pinky, you're going to push away and your wrist is going to cave in. Stop. And then push in and pull. Stop, up bow, stop, pivot, down bow. Resist the urge to try to do this too soon. You can see now 
in as I move through the, the motion, you can see now that this is happening, right? That my bow is doing this, this figure eight. And you can probably hear subtly that I'm getting that k, but it's, it's disguised. It becomes more subtle over time. So you can make really lyrical melodies. That wasn't my best version, but you get the point. Even though this figure eight is happening, my bow, when it's actually drawing on the string, it's more or less straight, even though there's this little thing that happens right here. And this is something that many elite players have worked on and understand, and it's part of how they get their core sound, and it's part of how they make that smooth transition from up to down. Now. There's another part of this that I want to share because it's so connected. I mentioned to you earlier how important it was to be supporting from your left left um, arm. If you're trying to hold the violin with your neck, then it's going to be harder for you to put more force on the violin. And one of the one of the characteristics of players that haven't learned this is that they tend to play more wispy. And they're basically they're basically gliding the bow. And trying to land it, and that's why you get these these shutters and stuff. And they play, you know, almost flautando. It's just it's not that coarse sound. And I don't use that sound with, the, especially with the vibrato, all the time. You might notice. I mean, it's a choice. You don't have to play a classical sound, but there's still reasons to get this core sound, even if it's quiet. I mean, that's another variation of colors that I can create, but I'm able to get that core sound. I liken it to the, the idea that a singer can sing from their head or their throat or their chest, or they can sing from their from their, their core. And I think this is what we want to do on the violin. I digress. Sorry about that. What I was trying to say is that you need to support the violin in, able, in, in order to be able to put force downwards without putting all that weight on your neck. It won't work. So we support here, we can put force down here, and we can be very fluid everywhere else. And that's what we want, it'd be like water. Now, let me show you, <laughs> let me explain this to you so you understand it, because there's a lot of violin players that don't really understand why is everybody always telling me to hold the violin up, hold the violin up. I'm gonna show you. Hold your violin like this, just with one hand. Just feel the amount of weight that's on your forearm, your wrist, your fingers. It'll start to get heavy after a second. Now imagine that the bow was on the violin adding extra weight. Just put a little weight here. It's really heavy, right? Causes pain right here after a while. Now, if you do this, just put, it relieves all of that weight, right? It's like magic. Now all you have to do here is just, you're just holding it in place, but you're not holding it up so much. It's the same thing that's happening here. Our chin just provides a little bit of weight and our neck can hold it a little bit like this, right? But mostly it's weight from here. We're supporting the violin from here. Because if we don't, then what happens is we're constricting our spine, we're constricting our neck, which is going to cause uh, less range of motion, less flexibility, less strength, less accuracy. You know, it's just a bit, and pain and injury actually. So at all costs, we want to have our spine elongated, our neck be not cramping, our shoulders loose. And the way to do that is to support here. And that's also what allows us to put more weight here and ultimately to get that great sound. I hope this lesson's helped. Please let me know. Please do the exercises. Be patient. Don't try to go too soon to this. Don't try, just do the stopping. Stop, push out, and then draw. Stop, stop. Do that for a while. 
let me know how it goes. <laughs> As always, I really um, appreciate you tuning in. You can leave me a comment. Please leave me a comment and let me know if this was helpful. Let me know um, any suggestions you have and look for resources to get free courses, to get the backing tracks, to join my private online studio. Uh, every new member of my studio uh, receives a free uh, introductory private lesson with me. I'd love to work with you. Thanks so much. Until the next lesson, happy practicing.